Hey folks, it's Rob, and this is Kerbal Space Program, and welcome back to my science career plan. Today we choose to go, well, out there. Maybe to the moon, maybe to Minmus. Not because it's easy. Well, actually, it will probably be kind of easy. Why will it be easy? Because I built this thing. Yeah, this is Explorer 1, as I've decided to call it. It has an uh, extensive array of boosters. Uh, first stage is this set of four plus this one in the internal. Then these four large boosters fire. Then we have a liquid stage. And then we have the space transit or uh, liquid stage, which is actually kind of um, asparagus. Uh, so we have this set on the outer, then this set on the outer, then it feeds into the inner engine. And we have two sets of science equipment, a transmitter, and of course battery packs and parachutes for the return. Uh, there is an inline stabilizer right there. It is below the return package because I don't want that as part of the weight of the return. I'm hoping to get back all my science and not... Uh, crash and explode anything. Uh, we have strutted this all to hell uh, because I can't rely on uh, connectors down the way. <clears throat> I'm hoping it'll hold together. I need to do a final check of my staging. So let's see here. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So then let's see these four. Liquid engines fire after DC. Uh -huh. And then that detaches those four on the outer. The inner engine fires and detaches. Then we can fire the outer ring. Yes, this should work. I haven't done any testing on the actual flight. All I've done is built this because I knew it would take a while, and it did. Because uh, fitting components together sometimes takes a while. So, um, hopefully it won't expl explode on the launch pad. First off, it's going to cost me close to 40,000 Kerbin bucks. Uh, <laughs> hopefully this will be worth the trip. So let's put her on the pad. I'd like to basically go into orbit around Minmus and come back. That's what I want to do. We'll see. I expect it's quite heavy, and this first booster stage is just going to kind of heave it off the launch pad. Uh, <laughs> and But it is standing freely, which is nice. Um, Jebediah is on board and ready to go. Let's uh, activate stabilization. Uh, I don't think there's anything I need to do on the pad itself. We have a night launch. Here goes nothing, kids. Three and a two and a one. Yeah, the fifth engine does make a make a difference. We're actually getting off the ground, which is good. A little bit overheat, but it shouldn't be a problem. center engine did not impact with any of our other equipment, so that's good. I'm going to pre-throttle down. Although I suspect we might need to throttle it up almost immediately, because we're not really moving as fast as I might like. But this is getting us altitude, so that's okay. But I is on board and he's having a good time. Yep. He's like, wow, man, I'm going to space again. Right. A little course correction here. 
bring up the speed thrust. We're wobbling, don't like that. Make sure we're still accelerating, we're actually decelerating at the moment. A bit more. There we go. Okay, we're over 10, so let's start angling over for an inclination. Thrust. Now this one's not asparagus, okay? Once these four engines run out of fuel, I gotta ditch these. Now, check how we're doing. Apoaps, this is... Oh, not far enough away. Get engine going. Oh, God damn it! Fine, I'll do it on this. It has a lot of fuel and weight. I just threw away for nothing. God damn it. Where was that LinkedIn? Fortunately, they're fairly efficient. We're not going fast enough, though. I need to start turning some of this into lateral motion. Shutting her down temporarily. I'm gonna get up to closer to peak. Crew report. Nothing to report. Okay. Not close up. Don't be annoying. Alright, so we're throwing a little thrust into that. More thrust, please. We've already lost a couple engines. We're still climbing. Inclination's not terrible, but we could probably fix it a little. Speed's climbing, but it's not what I want. Keeping it at about nine seconds in front of me. That's not ideal. Okay, ten. I had hoped to have this whole stage for basically maneuvering in space, but uh, I'm clearly going to have to throw away the entire asparagus arrangement just to actually get to where I need to go. 
which is annoying. But if I do a smart return orbit, I won't need that much fuel to get back. Uh, and yeah, I could fire that engine right now, but I'm trying to keep the fuel in an efficient use. This is way out there. We're doing good. Again, I'm not here to rescue Tomlin. He's going to have to continue to orbit, making his observations. And we have achieved orbit. Okay. That means I can kill the engine once I've finished my circularization. Okay. Well, those engines are empty anyway. Those are working well. Okay, so I got a full tank of gas. There's the moon. Minmus is usually simpler, even though moon is closer. Well, I'm not doing a landing though. The moon will do. Easier to land and take off on the on Minmus because the moon, uh, Minmus has a much lower gravity and it's a lot slower target. Um, Basically, I should wait till I'm in a better position. Not a terribly good position at the moment. We'll wait till we're up here at the top, then we'll start burning again. There's Tom Long. <laughs> Poor Tom Long. Okay. I'm going to burn with direction of travel at the moment. And... Bring her up to about two-thirds. Keep an eye on what that does to my orbit. should now bring us around to a better firing position. Okay. Line her up. That's still counter to travel. I don't really want to. <laughs> don't really want to be going that way. I will split the difference. Base. Let's see where he's 
using our fold-up kind of high-tech antenna. Let's ride her around. FAB1 still has some splash down. I'll have to recover that. Now that's me pointed directly at the target, okay? And that is like, well, that's a huge burn. <laughs> that's straight line, gonna smack into the target if I had unlimited fuel. That's not gonna happen. What we should do is burn for an intercept. hesitant because I'm on full burn, but I know I can burn for a fair while, so... is to move my orbit out far enough that I can get caught in the moon's orbit. And we have a closest approach there. And I'm just going to judge my fuel. Okay. We look like we're alright, so we're going to ride her out now. On, basically on the equator. It's really nice that way. We may have to do a few orbits though to make this all work out. to be honest, this actually works out a lot in my favor. It's basically a return. Um, so, it basically, I'm out of position in regards to the moon, but because we don't have to worry about life support, let's make the moon out of position to me. Better not grand. I have 
velocity is quite low, actually. There she is. I do love this this uh, this maneuver enhancement. All right, and okay. going to kill the engine for a moment so we can do an EVA. Jeb. Excellent. Remember kids, don't climb out while the engine's firing. Now. Because we are so far out. Even small thrust makes large differences in our trajectory. So, fuel goes are a long way out here. Okay, we're getting the approach down. Now, I want to see the orbit kind of. If I get close enough, the orbit will swing out and we'll get an encounter. Let's see how this goes. Now I'm not using any aids. I know you got like mechanical jeb and all that stuff out there. And honestly, I'm on not Scott, Scott Manley. Okay, I'm doing this all by the seat of my pants. It's been a while since I've even done an orbital, uh, uh, orbital uh, approach. I'm honestly having to relearn my crap. Whoa there, Rob. Too fast. Okay. Just wanted to move ahead a bit. I practically lost the moon. There it is. All right. Bring me back into phase. I know it's kind of cheating, like, you know, using unlimited life support. It feels like cheating. Poor Tom Long whipping around the plant, plant curbing down there. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to loiter in <laughs> lunar orbit and wait for the moon to catch up with us. Okay, so it should be behind me right now. Yep, there she is. So actually, if I burn towards it now, We'll slow down. Which is somewhat counterindicated, gotta say. Don't actually want to fall back to Kerbin, though, of course, so. Maybe a bit of angle. So you can see it, my orbit's tightening, but we're still staying out here.
at this rate it'll get me a curb in return. Target position at closest approach. This is still going to be well behind me. Hmm. I was hoping gravity would take care of that one and a half degrees. turned around. Right, turn it to make it set make it if it makes sense, Rob. There. have some fuel. Might as well get a report. Yep, keep that one. to report there. Jeb is like, whoa, man, whoa. Okay. Mm, yeah, we still have liquid charge. Looks like we completed one of our projects. I'm moving very slowly now. All right, let's uh just continue to drift along here. Very careful, Rob. Balancing boredom with not wanting to zip on by. Oh, 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 oh. This is us entering Mooner uh, getting a moon encounter. Which is exactly what I want. Mooner gravity is going to be strong enough to have me in its thrall for a period of time. That should allow me to make some observations, and then I will go in back into Kerbin control after a slight fluctuation in my orbit, and then that'll give us a return on the fuel that we already have. Excellent. Okay, so... What we do is let the moon catch up with us. So this is us now in Mooner Encounter. Um, <clears throat> hopefully this means I can now get a report from near the moon. 
Yep. Look at the surface of the moon and try to find a good landing space. We want to transmit that back now. Now, which base have I not used? Okay, this one. Excellent, we keep that. And this bay. Yep, we keep that one too. And you're doing an EVA job. Ha ha! Excellent. Get back inside. And now we just kind of let it happen. Uh, cause <laughs> while it says my trajectory is going to send me flying out over here into Mooner Escape, it is going to be Mooner Escape, but the moon's actually going to move during the course of all this. Because my true orbit is still going to be back to Kerbin. There she is, kids, flying by. And it is a Mooner flyby. The Moon is flying past us, because we are drifting along, actually, at not much speed relative to Kerbin. Uh, so the Moon is passing us at about 560 meters a second. Which is, in my opinion, pretty neat. <laughs> See, and the escape point just keeps moving towards us. And then we'll be in this return. And the only thing I then want to consider is uh, trying to get as close to the, cur to the space center as possible, really. There we go. We're back on a vector for Kerbin. Now, I mustn't accelerate into the planet. Okay, that's how we die. So <laughs> um, I'm thinking with my cargo, a water landing's probably best. We will be accelerating this entire time as we come down. And I know this isn't terribly exciting, but I don't really, 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 really don't want to smash into Kerbin on time acceleration. Or worse yet, fly through it and end up, like, somewhere else. Because sometimes that happens, too. This is still an alpha. <laughs> um, actually, flying through it isn't as bad as crashing into it. Losing everything would suck ass, especially since I invested about 40,000 Kerbin bucks in this mission. And Jeb is on board, and can't wait till I get solar panels. Where is Kerbin? There's the moon. There's the sun. There she is, below me. Okay. <laughs> That's right, folks. We're plummeting straight to Kerbin. I actually still have fuel and oxidizer on board. I'm going to actually fire up the engine just a little bit.
Just so I can get enough electricity to make sure we have plenty for everything else. Urban gravity is basically accelerating us down towards the surface. The space center is over there, I think, where the flags are. First landing site is definitely like on the courtyard of the, of the space center. Um, currently it looks like I'm coming down for a hard land landing, and I don't want that. Um, the time to make vector changes is now. If I go through, I'm going to have an R encounter. Okay. Well, that's fine. We're not going to go through. Uh, I'm all turned around. An artificial cardinal direction would be useful. Uh, let's see now. She's coming in fast. But she will make a water landing, I think. Hard to see on the night side, but I think that's water. data from space around Kerbin. Got that done. Might as well use up the fuel. There she goes. is totally an ocean landing. That's fine. Orient the craft for re-entry. There we go. Still thinks we're doing orbit, even though I'm going to be heading directly into the surface. But, you know, <clears throat> that's because we are moving at close to 2,750 clump meters a second. So, you know, we're, we're fast. still well into space, though. Yeah, nothing to report from here. Shutting down stabilization. 
conserving power. It's not really necessary right now. Test the radial mount parachute between 17,300 and 18,900, but I have to be at a speed between 110 and 210. That's not going to happen. Uh, that's not going to happen. No, this is all. No, we don't have any of this ready right now. Whatever. Can we just get rid of that right now? Thank you. Stop it. Thank you. There we are. Atmosphere, kids. We're coming in really fast at more than 3,000 meters a second. We're going to hit the atmosphere hard. <laughs> Good thing that we can't burn up. Parachutes deployed for extra drag. Please slow me down. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I was beginning to think this was going to, they were going to rip off. <laughs> uh, which has happened to me in the past. <laughs> uh, and is a very bad thing. Um... Sounds like some of our bits just hit the ocean. Now, hopefully, we'll eventually, once the f they fully deploy, which will happen any moment now, there we are. Oh, excellent, we're well below seven meters a second. We're gonna be fine, okay. We'll just uh, time accelerate down for a bit because this is pretty slow. Do 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 Right. Nearly there. And we are there. Do I have a report from this ocean? Uh, apparently I do. Okay, so let's bring her back. We went to the moon and we didn't really do other things, but we went to the moon and inside this decade, so Right, science, 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 and more science. That's 240 science total, 184.0 earned on this mission, plus the stuff I beamed back. And the parts recovery got me a nice little refund of 4,251 Kerbin bucks. And, of course, more reputation for Jebediah, who's got an astounding amount of reputation probably by this point. Um, <clears throat> so that's awesome. We got these jobs done. means I can just get rid of them now. There we go. And uh, I should go to the Flight Control Center and see about that remaining bit of the FAB-1. Yeah, recover the uh, what's left of the FAB-1. I didn't know there was anything left of it. Material study while in space near Kerbin. Huh. And a mystery goo observation. Okay. Well, it's all science. Well, plus a significant refund for the bits. Guess I never picked that up. Okay. Well, cool. And that gets us a buttload of science we can sp now spend. 246.4 to be exactly, if you're wondering what a buttload is. Um... Hmm. Guess we should pick up the advanced rocketry since it's down there at 45. And let's see, what have we got in the way of science packages? Well, the mobile processing lab allows us to rinse and repeat, plus the thermometer. Uh, I think the processing lab has to be manned, though. 
kind of complicated to use, I'm thinking. Uh, more advanced construction could be handy. And the heavy rocketry, get some bigger gear. Super heavy booster, the skipper engine, the poodle engine, big tanks. Yeah, that allows for some really big shoes. Aeronautics, not that interested in the aerodynamics, to be honest. The science isn't there. Uh, advanced flight control could be good stuff. We like thruster blocks and things like that. It's very handy. Um, hmm. Power components. I could probably afford two from that tier. Specialized construction. Allows for, like, adapters and docking ports and, yeah, that kind of thing. Not really what I'm looking for right now. Heavier rocketry, which is, you know, based off of <laughs> the fuel stuff we've already gotten. You can get the mainsail liquid engine, the LFB KR 1x2, which is a very large engine as well, uh, set up as well. And, of course, the Rocco Max Jumbo 64 fuel tank, which is huge. <laughs> Uh, but that would cost me 160 science. Uh, but then, basically, the solar system becomes my oyster, practically, at that point. Except I won't have the really advanced engines to get the proper efficiency out in space. I'll just be able to do heavy lifting. Um, I do like the power equipment, because I like having the photovoltaic panels and the rechargeable battery bank. They work quite well. We did know about electricity before inventing spaceflight. The big breakthrough here was combining the two. Indeed. <laughs> uh, the micro landing strut and the small gear bay. Eh. Not in a huge hurry for those. Although landing on the moon and Minmus are going to have to come into my future. Uh, and the micro strut would allow me to reduce weight considerably. The thermometer will allow me to actually grab a bit more science. Which makes me think I should go for here. I mean, the mobility enhancer... It's a ladder I mount to the side of the, to the craft. Okay. Uh, but uh, the mobile processing lab... Uh, it'd be good. It would allow me to do more with this... And still, like, doubling up the, my science experiments like I just did. I'd be able to reset my my experiments in pro, uh, tr by transferring the science to the lab and then be able to do them again if I wanted. Um, get the most out of the situation, as it were. Advanced flight control is nice, though. Oh, I'm like a kid in a candy shop, and I only have so much allowance. Um... Basically, I get to have two picks. Or I can have one of these. Because I don't have enough for one of these and one of these. I get two picks from this row, or I get one of those. The original Kerbin fanboy in me goes, Buy the big, big rockets, Rob! Buy them! But I can get pretty much the same satisfaction from this. Plus, I get the really big booster. So, yeah, we'll go with that. And does that reduce the cost of this? No. Okay. And Markham X brand decoupler would be a good thing. But so would the science. So would the electrics. Oh, I want them all. All right, I will take the science. Just so I have a hope of getting more science. Right, that leaves me with 21 science left. Okay. We got any new contracts? Yep. Explore Duna. Bloody hell. Test hydraulic detachment manifold in flight over Kerbin. Test Rockabax Mark 55 radial mount liquid engine in flight over Kerbin. Test the 2T18A launch stability enhancer landed at Kerbin. Well, I can definitely do that. Mm-hmm. 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 
Right, I'll just take that right now. <laughs> uh, but we'll cheese that next time. Thank you very much for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and join us next time for maybe a trip to Duna? We'll see. Um, probably a trip to Minmus. <laughs> Anyhow, have a great day, folks. Goodbye.